I'm calling this video Callie's Christmas. Callie is the collie puppy that we have and we're going to take a look at her and some other things. Let's get started. So first this is what the studio looks like right now and if you've been watching the YouTube channel you know the different projects that I've been working on so I won't go into those. I just wanted to get a general look at the ambiance of what's happening in December at my home and studio in Vermont. I've been doing a lot of paintings of small miniature animals involved in different play activities and that's been a lot of fun for me. They're simply and completely done for my amusement but I enjoy being in the world of these little animals and, and having them do mischievous things with objects that are not toys and that's been like I said it's fun and it amuses me. But now let's take a look at well, there she is. There's Callie the Collie right there. Well, she got into a box. Yeah, she comes into the studio and sometimes can find things that she shouldn't get into, but I have my eye on her all the time. What you see on her is what they call an indoor leash. There's no loop at the end of it, so it gives me better control if I want to manage her within the house. So there is uh, what the house looks like right now. It's, it's set for my book group that's coming, a nice warm fire going. Maggie the the hound dog in her usual spot, wherever it's warm is her usual spot. And then let's look down and oh, it's my shadow. Hello. My shadow starts at 5.30 in the morning and goes till about 9 o'clock at night. Callie the Collie. So in honor of that, I thought let's do a Callie the Collie picture, which I've done recently, but I wanted to do it differently this time. I wanted to see if I could take the paint almost directly from the paint wells thick, I mean really thick paint, and apply it even more direct than I've ever been before, what would happen. So I'm using a triad here. I have, um, let's see, ultramarine blue, cerulean, I have burnt sienna, and a little bit of alizarin crimson. But I'm not mixing them. I'm grabbing them from, there we go. See how thick that cerulean blue is? And I'm putting it right in there and I'm not going to go back and forth over it and then there's some burnt sienna going in right next to that and then a quite a bit of ultramarine where it looks quite dark there. There's a lot of blue in the color black when you really look at it or if it catches the sunshine in any way and I just wanted to see how much color can I infuse. So there's the triad that I'm using for my darks, those three colors and I don't mix them at, in a pile and make one color out of them. I'm using all three of them and combining them wet into wet on this 8x8 eight eight piece of Arsh uh, rough paper. Rough paper? Is it rough paper? Let's see. It's the green pad. If you're, if you're a watercolorist, you know the green pad. You can see how wet the paint is where it glistens on the paper. So it's going on quite thick and quite wet with a probably like a number uh, 16 brush. Now I want to dry everything. Now the f So that's the first pass, I would call it. Those are the, th the four colors that I used. I'm putting in my darkest darks, and you can already tell, even if I didn't have the picture nearby, that I'm going to be painting a collie. You can just tell just based on that. And that is what I call the no tan. Now it's time to get ready for the lights. My typical triad for lights is Naples yellow, a rose, a permanent rose, and that cerulean blue again. It's really good to be consistent, especially if you're working in triads, to use similar, use the same color in tr more than one triad if you can. This is going to end up looking white or white-ish when I'm near the end, but there's actually no white on her. She's not a white object and she's not in the direct sunlight, so I, it's not even possible to have something completely white. So as usual, I'm not matching to the photograph, but I am trying to heighten color. The next place to go, I've got my darks in, I've got my lights in, the next place, and the only place left is those mint tones. So I picked three colors for that. I have Naples yellow, and I also have a uh, Quinacridum sienna, and that burnt sienna. Remember I used the burnt sienna in the first triad? Well, it's going to make a reappearance here. It's quite calculated in a way, because if I do this by overlapping and using the same colors in triads, then uh, things will go together nicer. 
and I'm putting in any place that I see as looking mid-toned. I'm leaving my decisions of what was dark, dark, and leaving my decisions of what was light, light. So things look a little spotty right now, but they won't for long. And that's because it's time to put in some neutrals. If there's a color I'm not sure what it is, I can identify it in terms of value. I knew that this was a mid-tone, but I didn't know if it was a gray, and I didn't know if it was a brown. Who knows? It might even be a little bit purplish, but that's what I'm going to use in a sense as the glue. If I'm not sure what something is, I won't identify it, but I will use a neutral in its in its place because that's going to um, create bridges between my different colored forms that I've put in. I guess that's the best way to explain it. It's something that you feel more than you see. Again, I'm not match. I'm not a matchy matchy painter. I'm not matching to the photograph. I'm just matching uh, value, what's dark and what's light, and trying to infuse as much color as I can into those mixes. Now, I wanted to put a background, a floral background, like uh, this wallpaper in the background, but didn't want to get too precious about it. This is going to flatten the whole painting, just the fact that I decided to do this. But I wanted to do it because I find it decorative, and I also have a friend, Julie Kirkland, who's a wonderful painter who's doing some of these now. She has a wonderful one with a moose and another one with a fox. And there are some other artists that do this behind their animal portraits. And I wanted to, you know, it's one of those things, if you see it and you really admire it, then, then you want to try it yourself. And I, I asked Julie, I asked permission if it was okay to do it, because I, I, I don't want to step on anybody's toes. That's not my intent. I just want to have fun. And, of course, it made a lot of sense to make that, use that floral pattern of the blues because uh, a lot of Cali is orange and the opposite of blue of course is going to be orange so that's going to set things off nicely so I there's always a system behind what I'm doing I'm I'm strategic I'm definitely strategic before I sit down to paint and then I try to stick to the strategy as I paint and when I paint and not to get too not to get too precious or careful about something and also not to um not not to be worried as much as just have fun. So now we're probably involved in some finishing touches here. I This was all done in one shot. I did not go out and change the water. I didn't get a second look of any kind, which is unusual for me. Usually I will do one complete pass, go away, come back and do some more later. But this was in a sense an even faster painting than I usually use because I was working directly from the wells. I didn't have a lot of mixing to do. It was it was pretty straightforward. It's fun for me to watch these afterwards because I can I can sort of see how I work the brush all around the painting. And when you're actually doing it, you don't know that you're doing that. I encourage you if you get a chance to paint to um, video yourself painting, you'll you'll see a lot about your process that you don't realize that you're doing. And I've I have found that to be really interesting and and helpful for me to have more strategy coming forward. Uh, you know, as I move forward. So now, like I said, we're getting very near the end of the painting, and I always like to say, remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paint's wet, mask for value, mix for color, and please join my YouTube channel. And, oh, and ask a friend to join the YouTube channel. Yeah, see, that's Callie. I think it came out pretty good. It's definitely her expression. Uh, so, see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.